Hey Yarn Lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, August the 20th, 2020 and this is video number 69. So I've been crafting over the course of this week and I've got some things to share with you. I've got one finished item, several new ones that I began and also one that I want to give an update and talk a little bit more on the structure of how I'm uh, planning ahead on this piece. If you're just new to this channel and just happened upon it, hi, I'm Gary, the host of Urban Yarn. I've set up this channel to talk about my yarny adventures. So that's in knit, crochet, a little bit of hand dyeing of yarn and acquisition. So where I purchase them online, in store and price points. So if that interests you, please consider, you know, sticking around, give me a thumbs up if you like the content and subscribing, becoming a yarny friend of mine, that would be great. So to all those fiber friends who have uh, returned and, in, and are visiting again, welcome back. It's great to see everyone. I've been reading all of your comments and I've got some questions down here that I thought maybe, even though I've answered the questions uh, to the best of my ability throughout the course of each of the videos, I'm gonna share some of these ones with people so that uh, everyone can enjoy the responses, I guess. So let's begin with the first finished object and it was the one that I featured in my previous video. Uh, it was for my niece. So my niece is four years old or almost four years old and uh, she's a little bit of a soldier in the back backyard. So I finished this sweater and hopefully it'll keep up with her energy levels that she has. So she likes jumping and rolling off things and so I think this sweater will absolutely be great for her to play in in the backyard. So it's a little bit of a scrappy uh, sweater like scraps I use and here it is. It's just adorable. I love it. So it's a raglan sweater that I knitted from the top down and it all started off with this uh, band for the neck and there I did my math for uh, the raglan sleeves and also the the count for the, the chest and the back. So I knitted it in on circular needles and it was on 4.5 millimeter circular needles and look how awesome it looks. Oh my goodness. So she loves purple and this has many, many different, I guess, hues in the purple family and some oranges and also some uh, blues as well. So a little bit of a mix match of colorways there, but I absolutely enjoyed uh, the different styles of holding two yarns together pretty much all the way through except for the band the bands and the cuffs and the waist so those were all in the ancient arts yarn in a colorway called uh, Beaujolais Nouveau and it's held on its own and the cuffs I actually did on a 3.75 millimeter set of knitting needles it's a sport weight yarn, so it is a number uh, number two, and I had to go down because I felt found that the 4.5 millimeter set of knitting needles was making uh, the fabric a little holy. So I uh, did the the ribbing the ribbing uh, parts of this sweater in on a 3.75 millimeter, so a little little smaller uh, gauge. And the rest was uh, 4.5 millimeters. And I held up here a series of different yarns. So this one here was a uh, dyed up job that I did in the kitchen. And I held it with a line brand sock weight yarn. And it was in the collection called Manny Penny. And the mittens were was the colorway. And it sort of went into this orange from purple. And then I used Lime Brand Feels Like Butter. I believe the colorway was called Lilac. And I held it with another yarn that I dyed. And I called that yarn colorway Master of Ceremonies. And then I held it here with a Knit Picks fingering weight in the colorway called Confetti. So a little bit of a mashup of different yarns there, but it, really really came out a durable fabric so it'll keep her nice and warm and it should keep up with her 
tumbles and her rolling and jumping around in the backyard. So she's a little bit of a soldier and I think this will be her armour. So a great little number for the fall and the winter. Absolutely, absolutely think it's so adorable. And I'm going to give it to her perhaps maybe next weekend uh, as a gift just to try it on, see whether it fits her. And I know that the band gets around her head, so that's, that's a bonus. Yeah, so this is what was left uh, as the little scraps from the scrappy sweater. So uh, yet again, uh, this could be used in a shawl or a finger weight um, fabric scarf. So I'm gonna keep these and use them up. So yeah, the next thing that I want to talk about is a new works in progress and this one is a baby blanket that I'm doing and I'm knitting up in garter stitch. I think it's probably gonna stretch out after it gets off the circular set of needles to maybe around five, five feet long. And I am holding again a series of different yarns together and then on its own I'm doing a different uh, stripe here and then I'll hold another series of uh, two different yarns together and then have my stripes going lengthwise acro uh, across then uh, sorry lengthwise up and down and then bind off maybe around four four feet so I'm thinking maybe the stripes will be um, up to maybe seven stripes across and then I'll get to my four feet and then bind off so really enjoying that it's it's a great it's a great little textured baby blanket and it's gonna be for the second niece because I don't want to just come with one project for one of the nieces I want to share the love and and you know let the other little niece know that she's equally uh, you know in my thoughts and no, it captures my heart as well. So, and she's a little younger. She's only, I think, just over a year old. So, yeah, this will stick around for a while, I think, in her room. And uh, hopefully she'll have it for a long time to come. So a little bit about the yarn that I'm using for that one. It's in this bag here. <laughs> These are all of my experiments that I'm going to be using in that, in that baby blanket. So... I'm going to hold together in one of the stripes this uh, BB Love from Georgia. I think that's, that's it there. So it's like a polyester yarn. And this is what I'm working on right now. It's the Karen Simply Baby. And the color is called uh, doo -doo -doo, Tiny Stripe. Oh, tiny, a tiny Sprite, sorry. So it's that kind of green yellow colorway. And then I've got, I'm holding these two together, which are actually the same colorway, but I've uh, wound them up into balls and one starts, uh, one starts at the middle of the cake and the other one starts in the, the end of the cake. So I'm, when I hold them together, the two colors will uh, always blend with a different shade so that's the whole idea of uh, using up these two. And these are the willow wheels that I got in a mystery bag. And they are a sister company of Hirschner's. And they came like this. So it's willow wheels. Uh, the colorway of these two here, I believe were, I'm gonna say Sedona, but I'm not sure. I've lost the ball band, so I can't tell you what the colorways of these ones are. But uh, in in another uh, batch of stripes that I'm going to put in the, the baby blanket, I'm going to pair these two together. And again, they're the Willow, Willow Wheels from Willow Yarns. And it's a sister company of Hirschner's, so uh, hirschner's.com. And this one here is called Pansy, the colorway, and this one here is called Eden. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing how those colors mull up together. The next project that I'm working on that I want to showcase is a fiber spider 
tutorial pattern and I believe he got the uh, pattern or design from a company or organization called the Purple Iguana or the Purple Goanna Iguana I think it is and uh, so it is the Rivulet shawl and I am on row 24 right now I just started this last night so I haven't gotten too far with this but it is uh, working up really really nicely I, I like it it's very sheer and it reminded me when I first did my first 12 uh, rows it reminded me a little bit of a doily but now that I'm getting into the different colors and I'm going further out it looks like a very sheer a very sheer uh, shawl that it's going to make and what I'm using in this one is a yarn swap that I did with Rose from Rose Likes Crochet. Hi Rose! Uh, so she had uh, swapped with me this particular yarn bee wheel. It's called the Rainbow Rhapsody Sapphire Blue. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, there we go. And uh, so yeah, it's a really, really fine, I'm gonna say it's a super fine lace weight yarn and it may it may be going into fingering but I think it might be between fingering and lace it's super fine and in this cake you get uh, I believe it was almost a thousand uh, yards let me see yeah it says it's a one a one super fine and yeah, I, 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 I don't know where the yardage is. Oh, 918 yards. So I have done a little bit here, maybe an, an eighth of the cake, and it's gotten me this far already. So I know that the rows are gonna get longer and longer, so the, the expanse will take a lot more to grow because the, the rows are getting longer, but I think one cake will be enough to complete it and get it at a decent size. But love that. Oh wow, it's so great. And Fiber Spider, uh, Craig did such a great, um, a great uh, job of doing a tutorial. So super, super easy to understand. And, and thank you Rose for the lovely uh, yarn spot there too. The final one that I have to show, no, I think that's it. Okay, I almost forgot there is one other thing that I want to showcase and that is my update on a current work that I'm working on and it is the Fitzgerald sweater using the Tangier yarn. So here I am, I am now, am I showing you the right side? No, I'm not. So I'm now, uh, done my my uh, bind off for my sleeves and I am about an inch into the the front panel of the chest and I have pretty much um, over halfway now and really really loving the drape of it and mixing of the two uh, the three yarns that I'm uh, working up so in the first uh, part you saw me using only the, the, the first two, so it was the grey teal with the blue grey and then I introduced the uh, beige, brown and blue to the mix. So that's where the brown is coming in up here, the beige and brown. Yeah, so a little bit about this make. Uh, I am doing it uh, sort of different from how the pattern is suggesting and the pattern is by Jane Allison and I will link her uh, pattern down below in the description box as well. So without giving too much away about the pattern, she does hers in panels. So she requests to do the front panel, the back panel and then the sleeves and then join it all together. Whereas I'm doing it in the round and I am actually uh, figuring out through her patterns on how much she is uh, binding off for the sleeves uh, I'm adding it all together into the circular round tube and doing it 
in the one go. Now, what I've done here to make it easier for myself is I'm putting it on uh, my 4.5 millimeter set of knitting needles and I've got two of them now because I've bound off the front and the back and have the holes uh, bound off for the sleeves. So I, I'm working the front first on one set and once I get to the neckline where it's going to be like this top here, I am then going to divide again onto uh, two separate little 16 inch uh, 4.5 millimeters and I'll work up each panel separately or together but as separate entities and then turn around to the back to uh, the garment and work it up with the back set of 4.5 millimeter knitting needles so that actually helps me going back and forth back and forth uh, sliding the needle so that I can get one row of each of the colors that I'm blending uh, so as you can see here, there's one row of each of the skeins that I'm working through. So I'm blending them together and if I had them on straights with stoppers, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd have to do a lot of transferring of stitches and then uh, knit the, the next colour across, transfer again to knit the other, the other colour across. So what I'm doing is I'm just sliding my, my uh, circulars back and forth to enable me to get the the two the colors to blend the same as what I started in so <laughs> it's very confusing I know uh, so yeah I'm really enjoying the um, the color blending and I had to figure out how I was going to do that for continuing the color blending and this is the way that I'm working on it I'm sure that there's probably other ways of doing it as well but I think this is the cleanest way of keeping the work uh, at any point I can flip around and, and do a couple of rows on the back if I want, a couple of rows on the front, maybe if I want to see how the colour works around as I'm working through, uh, I, can, I can do that on the fly so I don't have to wait around. And I, I think maybe working them in panels, it becomes a little bit more uh, complicated or convoluted to do the colour works because you always have two separate parts that won't be together whereas this is is always continually growing at the same pace for the body work. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. So that concludes the finished work and the works in progress part of the podcast. I'm now gonna jump into some questions that I received from viewers. I do answer all the questions, so I answered these individuals, but I thought maybe I'd share some of these uh, answers with uh, everyone here on YouTube and uh, maybe that will open up more discussion or I find that when you answer questions, maybe those spark up new questions. So yeah, and I'm gonna backtrack a little bit here on, on uh, the past podcast that I showcased from Penny Bolton's gift. So I'll start there. And these beautiful Hanks were in that gift box and I love them. Hi Penny, how you doing? And uh, it is, two of the hanks from Etrophil in the avant-garde collection and inside the little card here was the breakdown of what the fiber content was in a different language now i thought that the language was norwegian but i've since been corrected by a fellow canadian youtuber out there her name's frida hi frida how you doing and uh, she has an amazing YouTube channel. I'm going to link her channel down below for everyone to go over and have a look. Uh, I watched Frida when uh, she was talking about her journey to Canada and all of her yarny goodness that she covers. So she's got heaps and heaps of tutorials. Anyway, getting back to the translation here. 90% yin or yun is wool and 10% of EPEC is silk. So it's a wool silk blend. Absolutely, absolutely soft. I can't wait to get into this. I just have a, quite a lineup of a, a queue right now where I have things in bags ready to go and patterns and ideas for each of the, the bags that I have in a lineup. But uh, definitely this one may butt into a, like the lineup somewhere along the way. I absolutely love it. It's awesome. Thank you so much, Penny. And I may have not given enough airplay or 
I was watching back uh, showcasing this beautiful keychain that she included and I'm going to get it right up close to the camera because it did miss out on being displayed properly. I was just so, so excited about opening that uh, live on camera that I didn't really prepare to showcase it. So Penny Bolton has punched in all of these letters and the first ring here says Urban Yarn in a silver kind of, it's like a pummeled, a little bit uh, faceted uh, band of, of silver. And then here in a copper is Gary, my name. So the Gary uh, features on the bottom there. So she's punched those letters in. And this wonderful Aztec sun with, it looks like leaves or something for spokes. It's absolutely amazing. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to link her details down below. Now, she did say that she's uh, doing most of her business with uh, family, friends, word of mouth. And it is the Pen Daisy Designs name of her company. Uh, yeah, so Penny, I love them so much. Now, another question that one of the fiber friends out there gave me or asked of me was, do I prefer wood needles over metal needles? And I have to say that either or work for me. I have been doing a little bit of a, you know, a kind of a brainstorm whilst I was working on some projects this week. And this one uses, the Fitzgerald uses uh, wooden or bamboo, well it's wood. And uh, the baby blanket that I'm doing uses metal. So... I find that when it's hot and my ha hands are moist, moist from the heat or humidity, that the wooden ones uh, become very lab laborsome. They want to stick, the stitches want to stick, they don't want to transfer across one needle to the other uh, with, uh, as much as what they can do when it's cooler and there's not much moisture in the air. And I find that when I'm trying to help guide the needle or stitches off the needle uh, in the transfer, I'm having to push uh, on top of the tip with my finger to get that to go through and so that kind of wears a little bit on the fingertip whereas the metal one uh, is great for the moisture they're slippery all year round basically in cold weather or warm weather uh, so the reason why I like uh, the bamboo is that I can pack on stitches on the circulars and kind of the way I toss my items back into the bag or if I'm moving around transferring them uh, I know for sure that they're not going to slip off. It has that uh, natural resistance that all the stitches will remain. Even if they're packed stitches on, on the circulars, they're not going to slide off. Now, I know that you can buy stoppers, and I have used them when I pack a, a, on my stitches with a metal needle. So I, use, uh, I don't use stoppers. I, use, I compromise and I use elastic bands, or I have, uh, I have sometimes used... Uh, elastic which is what you have in your masks that go around your ears I have used elastic before to tie up the um, the ends of the of the needles so either or for me uh, I do think that the bamboo is nice to touch uh, so I have no real preference whatever's around I grab and I'll use uh, the other thing that I had problems with uh, when I received my box of yarn for my birthday from my mum in Australia, I noticed the labels were all in a different weight system. So they used the ply method, 4 ply, 8 ply, 16 ply, 10 ply, and I wasn't quite sure of the different, uh, I guess, how they related to what I'm used to, which is the numbering system or the uh, category of super fine, fine, light, medium, bulky, super bulky. I understand those with numbers, uh, but how they gel together, I wasn't quite sure. So a uh, fiber friend out there, her name's Alan, she suggested that there was a place that I could visit to find out what that gauge was. And Craft Yarn Council has one, I checked, and it does have a couple of the systems, but they didn't have the ply system there unless I was looking at the wrong chart, 
uh, Alan, if you wanted to uh, just comment on that and maybe uh, share that uh, link with us in your comments, uh, that would be great. Uh, but I did find it on a site called The Laughing, Laughing Hen. I'm going to just check that. Laughinghens.com has a chart that has uh, the the conversions of all the different systems from the UK, Australia, the US. So it's really, really concise and I'll, I'll add that to my description box below. Now, Kerry Penny, many, many moons ago, she did actually say to me uh, that I should print that out and have it close by because when she's working, she needs to make a reference on, uh, say, a weight so that she can pair it off with a certain needle or hook size. Uh, she has it there to, ready to go. Now, do you think that I was organized enough to actually uh, go and print it off? Uh, no, but now I found it on the laughing, the, the laughing hens. I can, oh, I don't know why my phone is recording what I'm saying right now. <laughs> Let me just turn that off. Um, so yeah, I can now print it off and have uh, that beside my workstation like Kerry Penny said. Hi Kerry Penny, how you doing? Uh, so yeah, I think that answers all of my questions that uh, I had written down to share with everyone. And I should devote a little bit of what I've been watching lately. And you know what? It's been YouTube as well as uh, I'm going to mention a, a bit of a series here that I watched uh, recently. And I believe it was on Netflix. And it was called The, Mal the, the Va Va Valhalla Murders. And it's a foreign movie. So it's very art house. It's got the suspense drama of a murder mystery so it follows uh, the detectives who are uh, uncovering a murder mystery and it's it's quite a, a suspense whodunit kind of thing and I love those type of movies and it's in you have to read subtitles as it is in uh, the language from Iceland and uh, I love the scenery it's just delightful delightful. Now all the characters, they're so real, like when you look at them, they haven't been all, you know, I guess dolled up with uh, plastic surgery or have their hair done. They kind of look like what who you would see or meet on the street uh, in your own community. So I really, really like that. It's, it's got uh, some sort of raw essence about it. So uh, if you're if you're interested in watching a series, uh, it's quite a brief series. Uh, it leaves off on a, a little bit of a cliffhanger where you expect another another season to begin. So um, yeah, uh, that's one that I would suggest. I've been watching YouTubers as well, and a couple of the highlights of videos that I've been watching, I'm going to link down below in the description box as well. But uh, just to kind of recap them, I really, really loved Ryan from the yarn hag Ryan, she went to an outlet store from Lion Brand. I'm not sure where it was, New York perhaps. Anyway, so she was wandering around many, many aisles of discontinued yarn or new, new yarn that they had showcasing some of the crafts that they had around the store as well. Uh, some of the makes and some of these really big statuesque kind of animal structures made from yarn. It was just fascinating. So uh, Ryan, amazing, amazing job. And me and hubby are signing up to move in aisle three. We'd love to actually be amongst the three weight yarns. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's divide that up and take it over. I like that idea. Uh, so yeah, delicious, delicious yarn. The other one that I watched was uh, Rosalie's anniversary. She had a live for her anniversary. Now I was lurking in the background, washing dishes and listening to her infectious laugh. So she recapped a couple of her, um, I guess, highlights throughout her journey of the year. And I just wanna say, Rosalie, congratulations and happy anniversary. The other one was Kim from Kim's Crochet and Knits. She got her winnings from Crystal at Bagger Day and she did an unboxing and just the glow of happiness on her face. Oh, 
it just reminds me of when I received the box as well, so I know exactly how you felt. So, hi Kim, how are you doing? And which leads me to Crystal from Crystal at uh, Bagger Day. Uh, her and Mr. Bot were in the kitchen doing a dye up job, and I absolutely loved it all the results e equally the same. And the thing that I laughed a little bit to myself about was, uh, so Evelyn comes in and, you know, there's a lineup of yarn and basically Mr. Bod and Crystal are saying, oh, that's my least favorite, I don't like that one. So Evelyn comes in and she's like, I like that one. And it's basically the one <laughs> that her parents are saying is not the nicest. I equally agree. I think they all are magnificent. And the best part about it was that I loved that everyone was just having so much fun. Uh, yeah, so I guess that is all of what I have to cover. And uh, I will see you in the next episode. And stay safe, stay well, and enjoy your weekend. I have a few more things coming up that are orders from places that I purchased for the very first time. So I'm very interested in show, showing you some of the yarn from UK that I, that I got. And yeah, with that, I will bid thee farewell. Adios.